So a little while back, I did my second reiteration of my uh, ITX garage build, and it was a little ghetto to say the least. You know, first off, the holes didn't match compared to the first one. The solid state drive was just kind of hanging out over here, and although not the prettiest looking thing, it worked, and it got the job done. Fast forward a little later, doing some work and uh, cleaning some car parts on my bench over here, um, this computer met its match brake part cleaner and the cheap stuff at that too so i was cleaning something spraying it and it kind of got in here which you know that could be okay and well this computer didn't like it something went pop and next thing you know don't work no more so i did the right thing and just turned it back on and you know hope that all would work and yeah that didn't happen no power and as you can see over here yeah the brake clean just kind of ate away this plastic so I didn't like that too much so that kind of sucked did some testing and long story short on it the power supply thing over here yeah that thing just kind of fried on me good thing is this i7 4th gen and the memory and the motherboard works fine but honestly I'm kind of done with this setup and I'm just gonna go with something different so I got in the old eBay and I got this for $20 pretty cool it's the HP ProDesk 600 it's the G3 supports Intel 6th and 7th gen and I gotta say, for the size and for what I paid for it, it's perfect. This drawer is really small, size of my hand. Got the USB type C in the front, 3.0s, your whole headphones in case you need to listen to your tunes up front, power button. Nice little look on it, very low power powered machine. I think the CPU is rated at 53 watts and that's for the i3 7th gen. We'll talk about that in a second. Over here, it's got a little dent, which is another reason why I got it very cheap, but that's fine. This is just a Wi-Fi antenna, and um, I could probably pull that out. They put the sticker right over here. I mean, this is a this is a vent port. I mean, really, guys? Come on. But anyways, two display ports, VGA, some more USB action, Ethernet, and that's your power plug over here. And it does, like I said, it has Wi-Fi over here. So pretty cool. Let's open this up, which all we got to do is just pop this to the left. And this should slide out like so. And there we go. So now I said I paid $20 for it and there's a catch has no solid state drive. Great. No memory, even more great and no CPU. Fantastic. And honestly, I paid it for, I paid it that cheap. Well, for the dent and for that reason, I got a bunch of I three, uh, six and seven gen CPUs lying around. I got plenty of DDR four, um, so dim Ram, which should be perfect for this. And I do have extra solid state drive. So I have extra parts. So I'm honestly only paying $20 for this because those parts were just upgrades that customers just um, didn't want anything to do with it. But if I had to put money into this, and we'll talk about this on the price to performance and if it's worth it uh, towards the end of the video. Now it did come with the power plug, which is cool. Did have to get an adapter because, well, I don't keep these lying around. And I got this like on clearance at Best Buy. This is a display port to HDMI, which will be fine. And let's go through my goodies and see what we got over here. And this is a combination of everything from SD RAM all the way up to DDR4. No DDR5. That joker is expensive and I definitely don't want it in here lying around when it could be useful for something else. Uh, let's see. CPU, CPU. i3-7100. This is an 8 gig stick. AMD K62. That definitely won't work. Let's see what these are. These are two Samsung 4 gig kicks, which will be perfect. All I need is 8 gigs of RAM for this and for what we're going to try to do with it. So we have that. And of course, my solid state drive from the original ITX build. So this is a 256, 256 gig Samsung, will be perfect. Now what we need to do is take this off, which has three screws, one, two, three. This just slides over like that. We're just gonna move that over here. We don't have to disconnect it. And this should slide right out. All right, there we go. So we got our two sticks of RAM that we could put in right in here and our CPU. So the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and put the CPU in there because I really don't like these sockets being exposed.
wipe off this old thermal paste. He didn't seem to have anything on it, but we'll just wipe it off. Now the TDP rating for this i3-7100 is only 51 or 53 watts, I believe. It's a dual core, four threads, and it runs at 3.9 gigahertz. So that's actually more than enough for just browsing the web and stuff. And also for what we're gonna plan to do with this. Time for some cheap thermal paste that I just had lying around. This thing is... That should be fine. Let's go ahead and pop this on. So memory, two four gig sticks of DDR4, oh, it's 3200. Yeah, it's 3200, that's some good stuff right there. Probably doesn't support that speed, but still, it's nice to know. All right, that's tight, let's pop you back in. All right, there we go. Now, solid state drive, this is just gonna slide right in right over here. I gotta say, it's probably the easiest computer I've ever put together. And we're done. Now, one thing I am gonna plan to do is, in this video, is to see, does this make for a good retro gaming PC? I mean, we're gonna have an i3 7th gen in here, plenty of beans. Now, it doesn't have any cool graphics cards because the Intel iGPUs just don't work too good for gamings but for older emulation this could work and this actually could be a good bang for the buck on that so we're definitely gonna be tinkering with RetroArch and seeing what games and how much can we go with the systems to see how close to modern can we get probably not far but you know we'll see All right, this little guy came together pretty nicely. Simple install and probably the easiest thing I've ever really built. I don't know if you consider a build considering it was just putting stuff in there and it was already put together, but for the most part, pretty decent on it. So now, one of the reasons why I'm kind of interested in this is how well does it perform as a good emulation machine? And let's take a look at it. So the program I'm gonna take a look at is RetroArch. I love RetroArch, I use it for a lot of it, but I wanna see how well this thing handles and um, what kind of games we can play. So I'm gonna go ahead, we're gonna open it up. So now this is not an in-depth how-to guide on how to use RetroArch or do anything like that, but just testing the capabilities of this little HP over here. So of course we wanna load our core. We're gonna go with PlayStation. Let's go to PlayStation 1 and we're going to load our content. Now I have it saved on an external hard drive just for storage purposes and I use it on a lot of different machines. Go to my ROMs and emulators and what I'm going to load is Legend of Dragoon. Now for PlayStation, two things to keep in mind. You need to have the BIOS for it. There are many ways to get it and it's finicky and there's a lot of tweaking on it. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to load it up. And as you can see, it's running. So now I've played this a little bit, so I'm gonna go ahead and just go to my load state over here. So now the one thing that you'll kind of take away from this is that there's a little bit of um, artifacting and some of the colors are off on it, but that has more to do with the fact that, number one, I need to get the correct BIOS for the PlayStation, and number two, there is a bunch of tweaking options, and there's a lot of great videos on how to do that. But for the most part, I'm able to play my backup copies. <laughs> of my PlayStation games, and this runs fantastic. Definitely a playable experience. All right, so Nintendo 64 plays flawlessly. Donkey Kong Country, one of my favorite classics. So yeah, this little guy can play that. That's cool. All right, so Dreamcast seems to work flawlessly. No issues. Um, not familiar with the controls, and the good thing about this little thing is that this little computer is that it has Bluetooth, so I could actually set up my Xbox controller and use that for later, but for the most part, definitely playable. All right, so this little guy works fantastic, and for $20 plus the price of parts that I kind of already had put in, it's pretty decent. And let's talk about the price. So the i7, the i3-7100 goes for about $30 to $40. This goes anywhere from $30 to $50, $20 if you find a damaged one, and then the memory was 
$30 and I believe the SSD was $20. So you're looking at about $100 to $120 if you buy it and have to put the parts in there. You can get them for about $150 with like an i5 and all that stuff ready to go. But the bang for the buck is actually there in my opinion. Here's why. Number one, the size. Compared to this guy right over here, way sleeker, a lot shorter, and definitely is gonna tuck away a lot nicer uh, compared to this one. And the fact is that this has, you know, you don't need that whole PCI Express or anything for this type of use. And compared to the Raspberry Pi 4, which yeah, it's a lot smaller, but you have to come up with an enclosure, put some add-ons for it. You're probably gonna end up spending close to $150 to $200, but you don't have the flexibility as this one. This one, you can run Windows 11, Linux, do a multi-boot system, and it has more power considering running 3.9 gigahertz, two cores, four threads. Could put more memory in it, put a bigger hard drive in it on this little package, and you're able to have a, actually a great, emulation experience this played a lot of the roms and emulators with no issues playstation 1 dreamcast i haven't tried it with uh, playstation 2 or a lot playstation 3 i doubt we'd be able to get it running considering those are more high demand but considering that we can start all the way from nes atari sega move all the way up i think that's pretty good bang for the buck it tucks away nicely it's quiet and if you want to take this on the go and just kind of put like a one terabyte ssd in there and just load all your backups of your games that's actually a pretty good deal to me so i'm very happy with it and i definitely definitely recommend that if you guys are looking for a garage pc or just something small like that or even a portable emulation pc for cheap these can be had very cheap they work great and um i gotta say i'm definitely impressed with this and if i was gonna be on the road of traveling and i just wanted to play a whole bunch of retro games has the whole bluetooth pop in my xbox controller right over here bluetooth's good ready to go and i'm um, ready to have a classic time and take a trip down old memory lane so hope you guys enjoyed the video this was not an in-depth guide on how to use retroarch or anything like that but just number one get my garage pc back up and running and also when i'm waiting for paint to dry or whatever is going on in the garage I could just fire up some old classic games and have a good time so thanks for watching and we'll see what we come up with next